It's July 1st, and that means there's two reasons to celebrate. First, I'm part of the second annual Canada Day Video Hop, featuring Canadian crafters, craft products, shops, and magazines, with over $1,000 in prizes to be won. Plus, it's time for Christmas in July. I decided to combine these two occasions, and I've got four red and white holiday projects to show you. The beauty of these designs is that I'm not using holiday-themed products, so with a few alterations, these ideas will work all year long. First, I'm starting with the Stencils 360 tool, which is from a Canadian company called Penguin Palace Stamps. It's been around since last fall, and I've had lots of fun with it. I've linked my playlist above so you can see how I've used it, from beginner to advanced techniques. I'm using this Origami Shuriken stencil. These stencils are round, and if you're interested in seeing how I keep them with all my other stencils, I've put a link in the top corner for you. I place the stencil into the stencil guide, and I hold that stencil in place with some post-it tape. I want to cover over the little square hole in the edges where I'll be blending ink, so I don't get any between the guide and the stencil. The basic story of this tool is that you put the stencil guide inside the base and turn your stencil to get a complete design. The lines on the guide help you get precise placement, and the little square hole in this stencil tells me that it's designed to be turned 15 degrees, and on the base, 15 degrees is symbolized with squares. I chose some red ink and a small blending brush and I blended ink through the two shapes, putting more pressure on the concave side of the design and letting it lighten as I move to the other side. Then I line up the line with the arrow with the next square and I blend more ink through. The outline versus solid squares make it easy to help you keep track if you're using more than one color. You would just skip to the next solid square until they were all done and then change colors and do all the outline squares. But this time I'm using one color, so I blend ink through both shapes at every square, whether it's solid or outline. When I get to the end, I lift up the guide in the stencil and here's the result. The design itself looks 3D, but that darker blending helps the design pop even more. To finish this card off, I used some paper from Studio Light, which is sold at Canadian store Ecstasy Crafts. This pad has a full rainbow of colors with two matching shades on each piece, so if I flip through backwards, you see slightly different colors than when I flip the other way. It's 170 GSM, which feels to me to be slightly thinner than 80 pound cardstock, which makes it great for matting and for die cutting, which we'll see a bit later. For this card, I created a red frame around my geometric wreath shape, added a die cut sentiment and some iridescent gems from Studio Katya, another Canadian shop. Okay, that's exactly how this stencil is meant to be used, but you know me, I like to push it. And the first thing I did was flip the stencil over so that the design will look like it's moving in the other direction. And then I added some post-it tape to the ends of the shapes, right where they bend. This will give me just the inner circle of the design. And this time I blended my red ink full strength through all of them, following those 15 degree outline and solid squares. When I'm finished, I have a smaller geometric wreath design, which is perfect for another modern looking Christmas card. I used a circle die to cut it out, as well as to cut out the center of it. I popped it up on a four and a quarter inch card base with a red frame, and then I used the same die cut sentiment, but used the center of my wreath as the O. Okay, this time I am going to use just the solid squares as my guide, and this time I'm blending ink more heavily in the center and letting it fade out toward the edge. Again, I work my way around and you can see how the shape looks different because I'm skipping the outline squares. And here's why I'm doing that. I take the stencil out, clean it really well because I'm going to flip it over and I don't want any ink from the stencil landing on my card front. I line up the stencil so that the shapes are kind of facing the ones that are already on the cardstock. I tape it in place and start blending the ink through again, skipping the outline squares again and only using the solid squares as guides. I'm still blending heavier in the center and letting it fade to the outside, and as I work you can see that a star is forming, which is really kind of neat. To finish this card, I used the same paper, sentiment, and gems. But think how pretty this would be in a frosty blue. I think it would look like a snowflake. Okay, for my final project, I'm moving away from the stencils to a gift card holder. This is a Studio Light die set from Ecstasy Crafts, and it comes with a large die for the base, as well as some mandalas and rectangles to decorate it. They have a number of different designs in stock, so there are different looks you can get with a similar idea. I started by cutting the base die from a piece of the red cardstock. This cardstock is seven and a quarter inches by five inches, and you need it that big to cut this die. It does fit exactly on the cardstock top to bottom, but I turned it slightly just in case there was any shifting in my die cutting machine. 
The die cuts out the shape of the card and it also scores the fold line along each side of the center to make it easy. Notice that there are two different colors of red here, one on the outside, one on the inside. Next, I cut the mandala bases and one of the rectangles from white cardstock and I glued the mandala bases to the red base. To cut the mandalas themselves, I used another one of the red sheets of cardstock, but this time I flipped it over so that the mandalas will be the color of the inside of the card, if you know what I mean. I want to have a balance of the two colors of red showing from the front of the finished design. And when they come out, they're perfectly cut, despite the fact that they're so intricate. That's one advantage to using a lighter weight cardstock for die cutting. I used some liquid glue and a super fine tip to add the mandalas, but you could also use an adhesive sheet behind it before you cut it to make them into stickers, whatever you prefer. For the white rectangle on the inside, I'm going to use this Studio Light stencil to emboss a pattern right into it. To do this, you need a rubber embossing mat and some good pressure. Take a look at your die cutting machine instructions for embossing sandwiches, and you may need to add a cardstock shimmer to to get the right amount of pressure. But if you don't already know what sandwich works for you, be sure to start thin and slowly build up so you don't overload your die cutting machine. You get a look similar to an embossing folder, and you can use either the front or the back of the panel, whichever one you like better. I glued it into the card base and now it's time to decorate the outside. I want to add some more of those iridescent jewels, and I notice when the mandalas close they overlap a bit, so I won't put a jewel in that area so it'll sit flat. To finish off, I added the same die cut sentiment from red this time, and a little Christmas star from this Studio Light die set. And now to assemble, I grab my gift card. You can use temporary glue dots to hold the card in place, but of course I couldn't find mine, so I rolled up a little piece of purple tape after I rubbed it on my clothes to get rid of some of the stick, and I used that. And now, to hold it closed, I chose some white organza ribbon from my stash. I threaded it through the holes on the sides, and I tied a double knot on the front. I find it easiest to use my reverse tweezers to hold the first knot while I tie the second layer. It's such a pretty way to receive a gift card, don't you think? Christmas in July is going to be big this year, with the Cardmaker Success Summit coming up in a couple of weeks. I have a link below where you can get your free ticket for this event and get a jump start on your holiday crafting. But first, it's time to use the link in the description below to hop to the next video in the hop. All the hop details are also in the description. Don't forget to comment for a chance to win. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.